Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, we're going to be talking about different bandaging that I believe you should have on hand. This is bandages, and, and there's also a lot of other things too. Like this stuff. This first thing I'll talk about, of course, everyone should have, I hope. It's a box of band aids. You know, we do PR events, we do standbys in the ambulance, and this is the number one thing that we give out. We can have all these trauma dressings and all these life saving materials, and this is what people want. It's just a simple band aid. Even in my truck, I keep a large first aid kit. And you know what I use the most? Band aids. You know, I have huge, bulky dressings, trauma dressings, way to stop, you know, tourniquets, and this is what I need the most. All right, this next bandage is a little bit bigger than a 4x4. This is what we call a 4x4. It's basically just one sheet of gauze. It's really thin, of course, and it's 4x4. Imagine the name. This is for those cuts that need just a little bit more than a band-aid, but don't need something big and major. You can use a 4x4. You can use multiple 4x4 stacked on top of each other. But this works good for minor lacerations. The next step above a 4x4 is a 5x9. It's a little thicker bandage and a little bigger bandage. This is going to be able to absorb more blood, so it gets a little more in that heavy bleeding. And it's five by nine. An easy way to hold on these 5x9s and these 4x4 is with a roll of cling. It comes in different widths, different sizes, but it's really easy. It's just basically elastic. You can pull it around the extremity and hold on your bandaging. Now, my next three are for more serious bleeding. If you can't get something controlled with hand pressure, with basic bandaging techniques, these are what you're going to want to have on hand. This first one is Quick Clot. Now, I know it's got a bad rep in the past, but they've revamped the formula and they say that it's working great over in our wars right now. The military is using it and they're not having the problems anymore with the burns that it was causing. So, this is something though that you have a large cut, a large wound, a large trauma to an extremity that you can't get control. Um, you know, I wouldn't ever use this for a minor laceration. This is something that I'm afraid that if I don't use it, that I'm going to die or the patient is going to die. This is another example of a trauma dressing that the military is using. This is an elastic band that goes around, which also is going to help hold pressure onto the wound. So, but there again. This is not something I'm going to use just for my everyday simple laceration. This is something where I've tried the measures to control bleeding and I can't get it controlled. This is one of my other favorite toys. I've already done a video on it. This is the cat tourniquet. Now you can make a homemade tourniquet. It's very easy to do. Um, I'll probably do one in my next coming videos. But this is a commercial device that you can use on an extremity, an arm or a leg that will cut off circulation to the extremity, cut off bleeding. Um, now, you may have to use two of them, multiple ones, but you will cut off bleeding with using a cat tourniquet. This is another one of those items that's gotten a bad rap, but due to the military and the recent wars, they've started coming back around. And when I first got in the EMS, they were totally staying away from tourniquets, saying that they would lose the extremity, that if you tie a tourniquet, that you might as well say that your patient has lost their arm or their leg. Well, now we're tying these and they're getting full neurological function back in the extremity. I hope this video helps. You never know when you're going to be the first responder.